Hey everyone. So, this past weekend, we decided we were stuck waiting on a fancy tool um, so we could make an air filter mount for the big Jeep. And so we started moving on and kind of trying to do other things that have been on the list to get done. And that was basically uh, try to get the old trucks moving again. Uh, they all need a little something, right? It's about like every old vehicle. Uh, we got the Chevy uh, Dually. Uh, we found the fuel leak, or the, it wasn't even a fuel leak, but we converted it to a Cummins diesel. And then it sat for a little while, and then it, it started not keeping prime on the old fuel pump, which is a mechanical. It's an old, uh, it's a 90, that one's got a 91, I think, 90. No, 93 Dodge W350. So it's, it was out of a four-wheel drive. So it's not a P-pump. It's the old Bosch uh, VE, if I remember correctly. Bosch VE pump. Uh, mechanical. But we were sucking air, and so it wouldn't hold prime. So you could go and bleed the fuel injectors. Uh, crank it over, it spit fuel out, close them up, she'd pop off and run. But it only run for maybe a minute, right? And it wouldn't run that good, and then it would just kind of chug out. And you have to bleed the system again. It was just a fuel line, right? So we fixed that. That runs. Still got to rebuild the Hydro Boost pump though for the brakes. And I can't order a reman. Nobody seems to have them available. So we have to try to source that locally. So we decided then we jumped on to the 91 GMC. I got to drive this in high school. This thing looked beautiful. It didn't have this rust. The paint was in relatively nice shape, right? 2004, it's a 91. 2004 it was actually a really solid truck i always wanted to drive it my dad didn't really want me to you know i mean i just look at it. it just looks like you want to get in trouble in it if you imagine with the paint nice you know what i mean got the wheels same wheels but they were really shiny back then and she looked real good 350 automatic right had flow master exhaust on it sounds good we decided we we're going to fire that up this is pretty simple right but it's got a misfire now, I'm not exactly sure what the miss is. It's the engine's getting tired for sure, right? I mean, I, I, I've had it had a lifter stick on me here recently, uh, using it to go and grab something. I mean, the you can just tell the lifter started sticking. She started having all the lifter noise, lost more power, uh, but then it unstuck. So it, it still runs and drives, but it needs some love. Either way, we got it actually running again because it wasn't running right and it's so not runs decent enough where you could drive it just got a little bit of a miss and a heck of an exhaust leak then we switched over to the 92 uh had a fusible leak link blow which is all located up here this is kind of rough i'm not gonna lie but you see how you got this they got fusible links on them and stuff and it's basically a wire a section of wire that when it gets hot uh, due to like overloads, like too much power is being pulled through it or whatnot, it'll pop in the wire. Instead of a fuse or an inline fuse where you just replace the fuse, they use these, right? Pain in the butt. You got to replace the wire. So we had one of those go, got that fixed, got the headlight fixed. The uh, retaining clips were broke. So this headlight was just kind of flopping wherever. I had to put a battery in it. The other one had it such a bad short in it, it wouldn't even take a jump start or charge. It tells the chargers and jump starter packs that the polarity is reversed. Uh, so we put a battery in it and it's actually popping off really good. So this one, we got it running good. Decided we we're gonna take it for a drive. 
Uh, both the old diesels are hopped up a little. They're nothing, they're not race trucks, but they, they definitely go down the road. They both have 100 over uh, fuel injectors in them. HX35 turbos on both. And uh, if I remember correctly, the governor, I think there's, I think we did 3,200 springs in it. So they both do pretty decent. I mean, they're not race trucks, but they, they'll move out pretty good. We get this thing running, kind of look it over, check all the fluids, it checks out. Taking it for a cruise, having a little fun. The uh, brake warning light popped on and I lost all brakes. Like the pedal would just go all the way down. So I knew I blew a line somewhere. Well, found it. Had the boy help me out. We were trying to find the leak. So we were pushing the brakes and whatnot. And the leak. Where's the flashlight, buddy? Sleeping like in the videos. <laughs> what? So I'm sleeping like in the fine mechanic videos. All right. You see how it's all wet here? So right behind this spring, which is like a rock guard, but it looks like a spring. Right back here, it's got a pinhole and it's spraying straight up. Oh, so we got to replace that one. It goes all the way over to that side and over to here. Years ago, I converted this Dana, I forget, I think they call this Dana 70 HD. Or maybe it's just a Dana 70. I don't remember exactly. But I converted it to rear disc. I made the disc brake brackets and everything. This thing will make you, it, it stops real good. Yeah. Not now though. So I'm gonna replace the hard line going both wheels on the rear just because they're both same age, crusty. Got the helper today. He wants this truck to be driving. Oh, he's sleeping right now. We can't disturb him. I don't know how he's laughing while he's sleeping. So that's what we're doing. Um, I'm gonna, I've never done copper brake line, but that's what we're going to. I was trying to, I was gonna just cheat, but the guy at the parts store is too, we're gonna say uh, special. Too special to understand that I need a 15 and a, uh, I was gonna do a 15 inch long or a roundabout, it probably would end up being probably, I don't remember what sections they come in. But it would have been like 20 or something. And then a, a 36. I said, I just want those two. And he's like, can you flare? I respond, yes, I can flare. But I really don't want to deal with it. I don't want to have to find my adapters. You know, to do the double flare. Because you need to double flare any brake lines. Uh, so apparently that meant, yeah, I can, I can flare. I can, yeah, no big deal. So instead of spending any extra time, he comes back with a 51 inch piece and says, boom, that'll take care of you all, all day long. I'm like, well, no, I need two more ends. He's like, oh, what size? I'm like, those ends. He's like, what? They might not fit. So either way, I'm like, yes, they will. That's what's on there now. I just need two more of those ends. So. He goes back, you know. You could tell that he didn't want to deal with me, didn't want to deal with this. He just wanted to hurry up and get back outside and talk with his buddy who was out there. So I got rushed out of there. So now I'm going to try to make 51 inches, do this whole thing. And look, it doesn't even go from wheel to wheel. So I have absolutely zero extra material. And now I have to flare copper, which I have never flared, never double flared copper, obviously. I've never done brake lines in copper. So we're going to find out how this works. I don't know if double flaring copper is going to work or not. All right. I just wanted to give you all a heads up. It is hot in Iowa right now. Uh, really hot. I'm going to crank this fan back on. And it's going to be hard to hear. We also don't even have the truck all the way in the garage because we've got too much stuff. <sighs> never, never ending projects. I mean, we got the rock sliders for the wife's Jeep trailer. Yeah, you, know, you know. So we're working halfway in the garage. Actually, it'd be nicer to work outside. If I had a concrete driveway, I would be right out here working. There's a breeze. 
the sun is hot, but at least there's air movement. I got to use fans for that in the garage. So I'll pop back and give you a little updates and stuff, but I'm not going to have this recording the whole time because nobody's going to hear a dang thing other than air blowing. It's going to be great for us. So we're going to try flaring copper line. I've never flared copper line ever uh, as far as brake lines go. I flared big copper line. Did you do this already? Yeah. Nice. Look, look how pretty. See? Only the best. Hand bent. Oh. Did you use your head? I could. <laughs> I, I mean, I used it in a different way. I thought about how to make this. Anyways. So, you can rent this. Double flaring tool. Or pay for it and keep it if you do it enough. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to use the ones from the parts store. I'll see if it works or not. I don't know if it will. Is this a new one or an old set we no, had? It's an old one. So it's missing pieces? It's got what I need. <laughs> so, so it's missing pieces. It also gives you the instruction. Now, <laughs> you want to do a double flare, not a single flare. Because a single flare, there's a very high likelihood of you having a blowout in the flare itself. Or won't even seal. So, to do a double flare, you need to pay attention and read on here to set it up to get your right depth. And you also need the adapters. This is a 3 16 adapter. That's the size of brake line this truck uses. This truck. Nobody has seen this on this channel. It has been I around for... Hold on. Hold on. It was around before Levi. I think we oh, got it in 10. I, 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 I think we got it in... Parents house. No, 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 no. That was the Ram Charger in the 90. This we traded Danny's... I, or not Iger. The Brute Force for... It was like 2010. I can go Forever back. Forever ago. <laughs> so, it shows you how to do it. You want to make sure you follow the instructions so you don't mess it up. And we'll see how it actually works with copper. I don't know if this will flare copper or not. I don't know if this will grab copper good enough. So, it has you set the depth for this adapter just on this line and nowadays they sell really nice flare tools you just can just crimp this sucker and basically and it's awesome it's done i don't have one of those because we're cheap i actually haven't done brake lines in such a long time now that mm. i'm feeling a little rusty myself uh you want to make sure this gets pretty tight also Snap. make sure the nuts on the right way and on there because once you flare this it's not going on there no because then you got to cut it off and yeah, do and it all you, over again Anybody that's flared more than one brake line in their life has probably done that. And then you're like, and it's always the perfect flare when you when you have to cut it off, too. It's <laughs> always the best one you've ever done. You're like, oh, look at that. Just one time. Bam, it's good. All right. So you do that. Now I got to make sure. I'm pretty sure I just run this down now. Yes. So without the adapter in there, you just put this on. Make sure you get her lined up on the tube. Now the goal is the tube's not supposed to slide in and out. If it slides in and out, you're in trouble. That's why I kind of cheated and used a screwdriver to get a little tighter. No, hold on. As I'm cinching this down, I'm rethinking here. Doing it all wrong. Yes, this does need to be on there to start. See, and then you use this. This is how long it's been. Oh, I used to do this without <laughs> even thinking. So. Hey, read the, read the directions. Hey, it even tells you this is use this for step two, guys. Don't 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 trust me apparently. All right. Now that he's got Jesus. his marbles straight. I never said that. So now go and do this. Handle stuck in that position, whatever. Surprise, this tool isn't rusty. Oh gosh. You bent for line. Yeah. It's copper, it bends back easy. Then you pull this out. Okay, like I said, then you pull this out. It smashed it. Out. Okay, then you get your pliers to pull this out. You just don't keep tools around for 20 years. And only use them. Oh no, this got used a lot. I know it did. I had to replace the pin. Huh. 
You got it fixed down there? All right, so here we go. Quit acting like you're napping. So a bubble flared out pretty good. I don't know how good you can make it out in the camera. Bubble! But you can tell it's squished out. You got your point there. Now, this is the part where people will overdo it sometimes. Now is where you go without the adapter, and this pushes that center down. This is a bubble flare. So now you push down in the center again, and this just pushes the edge in. down in. This is where you can split it, though, if, you're, if you go too hard on this. Snap. And being just copper, I'm really not sure how... What uh, its tolerance is? Yeah, so, see, I'm working with new stuff now. I'm not sure. I'm probably going to call that. And we'll see if that uh, blew out or not. Let's hope. I don't want to go back to the parts store because this was miserable getting this. Okay, that actually looks like quite the good flare. Neither side is smushed down all the way around. If you had one side that was flatter than the others, that'd be a bad sign. You can see in the middle how it's all tapered evenly. So this actually looks like a very good flare. Here's the factory oh. one. That's how they sell it. That one looks better. I... <laughs> the hell it does. <laughs> Mine looks the same, minus my, my tool scarred this a little bit, it's okay. But, yeah, I mean. Do you got two ends on it? Yeah, Okay. Ends I need. <laughs> I think I am an amateur. Yes, I mean, it's solid... been 10 years. Oh. So I just want to give you a quick rundown on that. I mean, you can do your own brake lines. You can actually buy, I don't know about copper, but you can buy a brake line in a big roll, a 25 foot roll. Well, used to. You still can. But you got to find somebody who knows what you're talking about. Yeah. And that's why brick and mortar stores are going to end up going out because they hire somebody from like McDonald's or something that doesn't know the first thing about anything with cars. Dodge what? Oh, dude, 100%. Who it's makes, a Dodge. Who makes Camaro, you know? like And they spell like Camaro that. wrong, E-R. Yeah. E Cameo. Anyway. I mean, so, <laughs> you know, right on. If you want to learn cool, right? But that's the struggle. When you go to the parts store, you're trying to get a part, and you're telling them, and they're like, duh, they don't know what they're talking about. Is it two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive? It's a freaking wiper blade. It doesn't matter. I didn't give them an option to tell them what this was on. You can flare. It's really easy. I mean... The only thing I used that you didn't see was just a tubing cutter. You can get, they got little red ones and stuff you can buy at the parts stores. I don't think anybody rents them with a tubing cutter. Maybe they do. Maybe like Advanced or Riley's or... I thought they rented that separately. I've never seen one of these for rent. But they might. I don't know. But you need a tubing cutter because you can't just cut it with snips or anything. You're going to need something that cuts it properly. Round. Yeah. So, anyways. What are you doing? Why don't you put her in a little makeup? Well, actually, here, I'll show you. Being this isn't going to work for me anyways. Cutting tubing, you don't want to cut all at one time. No, you want to get it tight and get a line. Just get it snug. Yep. Then you want to spin it. i got to bend this, so i got a handle here. Then you want to spin it a couple times. Then you can tighten it a little bit more. Spin it more. If you go all in at once, you're just going to crush the pipe. So, Especially copper, something soft. Yeah. But you keep doing this. And then there's one more step I want to show you afterwards. Okay. So now it's cut, it's round. See how it squished the ends in? Yep. This tubing cutter has this on here. Some do not. But if they don't, you just need, you can use a flathead screwdriver or something. You need to stick that in there. Just open it back up. Open it back up. Then you can use, this one has a little square hole. You can use that to knock extra chunks off on the end, right? Now, that is ready to flare. So, 
Anyways. When did you buy that? Huh? When did you buy that? This? Yeah. Or is that from construction? This is when I worked a contract with plumbing. <laughs> yeah. I don't know when that was. It was like 08, 09. It's been a while. So, but you can get cheap ones. They'll work. This is a name brand, nice one. Cheap ones will do the job. I actually use cheap ones a lot, actually, because I don't want to take my nice stuff out in the woods. So, you can fix these. Um, you can do this. <laughs> We've easy. done it off roading. You can in yeah, the mud. I was gonna say we actually did it on Porter's the ninety Jeep, on Porter's Jeep. Oh yeah, last year it's more. We had to go to a uh, local O'Reilly's. Bought a little tubing cutter, but I didn't have any, and I think we had to buy a section of brake line. Yep. Um, and we unioned it up. Slurred it on the Jeep and everything. Yep. Got it done. So. And we did it on the ninety. Mm -hmm. The last time we had that took a vice grip, crimped it off to get out of the hole. And yeah, because it was a front brake. Yep. You don't want to lose front brakes. Rear brakes is one thing. Front is miserable. Someone looks miserable. He's dead. Let's take, take him out. Take his boots. <laughs> See? Ah! <laughs> yep, he's dead. <laughs> Anybody know where we can buy a new son? This one died. I think it's kind of like dogs. I don't want another one. <laughs> now, that'll go over to catch that side. This was one that was broke. The other one looks just as rough, but not leaking. I am just going to replace it. Yep, because one brake stand did this. It wasn't a break, I mean, I didn't intend it to be a brake stand, but it turned out. It was a brake stand. It smelled like tire smoke when we got home. I was just preloading a little bit of boost and they say the tire was already spinning. I did not feel it or hear it. But it's okay. Yay! Back to the parts store. Whoops, I gotta zoom in. Alright. So we go and get the brake lines on. Next steps bleed the brakes. I haven't even came to the front yet. I've just got the back up. <laughs> Just going through and that's his cleaner <laughs> yeah trying to make sure we can get everything to work well the next step is gonna be bleeder screws because the front doesn't have any problems these aren't even that old I was gonna say we converted this to disc brake it's been a while though but it wasn't 10 years ago yeah. but I made these brackets and everything um, and made it it's got Chevy three-quarter ton front brakes on the rear of this truck uh, this bleeder screw this one's actually one of the, be the better of the two. I already did one. This is supposed to be open. This is a two-wheel drive truck. It doesn't go off-road. There's a port right there, or at least supposed to be a port right there. I gotta get all that cleaned out because right now it won't bleed. I can promise you, it won't bleed. That's that old vehicle problems. I don't have any boots to fit on here. So I'll probably, uh, when this is done, I'll probably just take some wheel bearing grease actually and just smush over the top. It'll at least help. It'll catch the junk. So then you gotta get something yeah. small to fit in there. This hole on this end is actually really small. So I've got a tiny cotter pin. This seems to work. I've done drill bits in the past too, but uh, something else that would be small that a lot of people might have is the SIM card tool on iPhones. It won't get all the way down in here. But no, it'll but it'll, through. yeah. So. Yup. So we need to start driving our shit. <laughs> is what I heard. <laughs> So, what are you talking about? You can't even legally drive for six years. I can too. I can drive there and I just can't drive this. I said legally. Still. Yep. Yeah, so you got to get all this junk out. But this is the biggest problem here because I'm still not even through. It's like you need a little needle to put in there and shoot water through.
But I figured I'd show you that's another problem you run into. Old stuff. And stuff that sits. Yeah. I didn't even bother trying to bleed it. I just knew right off the bat. Just pull these out. I haven't even touched the front yet. I'm sure it's gonna be similar. Yay! So I'm gonna go shoot some brake cleaner here, try to break all this junk up the best I can. Get it clean. <laughs> that went a long ways. Hey, you need more. Got it, right here, look at that. Back up. Okay. <laughs> this is some crude stuff. Hey, we need to take those helpers off. Yeah, they're not helping a whole lot. They're actually a lot of that. I was going to say, they're like inverting on the bottom. Yeah, they're rough. In all honesty, this would benefit a lot from just leaf springs. Here. Yeah. Or I could just do an air ride system. But, anyway, so back in the day, I took the rear drums off because it needed all new components in it. And they're all going to be way expensive. The drums included, they were outrageous for this. This is pre COVID. Way mm -hmm. pre COVID, right? Everything was going to be outrageous. I decided I had some quarter inch plate steel and I knew Chevy front end stuff was dirt cheap. So I went and cut quarter inch plate with the cutoff wheel. Didn't have any nice fancy tools. This is done, I ended up welding this together. Some booger welds with a gasless MIG torch. Um, but made plates, put that on there, drilled and tapped for the caliper pins. And these are the rotors off a of three quarter ton Chevy. These are the calipers off a of three quarter ton Chevy. Do you remember what year? Like square body? Yeah, yeah, it was like 85, 86. So about like the Chevy. I had to drill out the rotor. Um, I had to get a special size drill bit. We had to order it. Um, but got the drill bit, drove in the lug studs right through it. Uh, and it works great, dead on both sides. Now they sell kits. Back then they did not sell kits for this diff. Not for Dodge. They well, did for Ford and yeah, Chevy, not, not this Dodge. Diff. Not this diff. <laughs> yeah. So I had to make this myself. Nobody sold a kit for this Dana 70. Now I think they make a kit for a Dana 70. I don't know. But Haven't looked. Don't need it. It's way, already done. You went and blooded the brakes. Got a really good pedal again. Really dirty hands. Really dirty, yep. Yeah. Life skills. Especially this thing. Yeah. Oh, oh, geez. See if he doesn't burn out when he comes back. Must be going through the church a lot. pilot with help we did hard brake lines we had to flare the lines and everything bleed the brakes he learned how to use a uh, pry bar to help get a tire on he couldn't lift it up so we used the pry bar and he was able to get it up there so yeah but we're just out cruising now just doing a little test drive the old 92 Old girl. She's got the tack on her and everything though. 